Dear Hannes, we are here at the Memorial Center in Srebrenica. I would like, like to ask you the first question. How do you perceive the role of the international community when it comes to the genocide which happened in July 1995 here in Srebrenica in the Dutch Bed Commando here? Well, I think uh, there was a big disappointment about the role of uh, the UN troops. Of course, the perpetrators are clear that uh, the troops who have been under the command of uh, Ratko Mladic. But nevertheless, to have high-ranking officers of UN troops who trusted in the treacherous words of uh, Ratko Mladic and who trusted his promises to protect and save uh, the people was absolutely wrong and irresponsible. And therefore the promise of the UN troops that they will create a space of safety and of protection was treacherous as well and led the people to believe and finally to be killed by the troops of Ratko Mladic. So yes, the role of the UN has been very, very disappointing and it shows that if you don't answer force by force, but just by nice words, does not help to save people's life. We have been visiting Srebrenica and the Memorial Center since yesterday. First we visited the cemetery, which is on the opposite side of this building. As our partner said, Dennis said that they, the complex exists of two, let's say, um, parts. Um, what was your first impression? If I remember correctly, it is your first time that you visit Srebrenica. And what was the first impression? What was the first experience that you gathered since yesterday here in Srebrenica, maybe, to describe? Well, it's still unbelievable that uh, with all these nice surroundings here, you have at the same time a spot like this one who uh, demonstrates the tragedy, the massacre, the genocide which have, has taken place. So, yes, it's uh, on the one hand, it's the amount of people who have been killed, the number of people who have been uh, killed. And on the other hand, of course, it's individual stories which are told at the memorial center, which gives you a, a very... Um, emotional picture of what happened which perhaps is a bit covered when you just see the the many stones gravestones and the many names but behind all these names are individual tragedies and especially if you speak with people as we could yesterday who have lost a great part of their families and still have to live here or want to live here it shows the tragedy of that uh, genocide in Srebrenica. Um, especially now in those tough times with the war in Ukraine and the pictures from Bucha in Kiev, in the, near Kiev. One has to be careful right now when it comes to comparisons maybe with Srebrenica and other genocides which happened. But how, what are the connecting points? How, how is it, how, may, how can it be true that still those things can happen, that still civilians are killed? ruthlessly with weapons? Well, I think, um, yes, there have been uh, many, many genocides and massacres done by colonial uh, powers, by Turkey against the Armenians, uh, inside Europe and by Europeans. Uh, it's always if people are confronted with uh, uh, aggressive power, aggressive power which can use arms, and on the other side, there are peoples without arms to defend themselves, then uh, genocides will happen again and again. So what we need is, of course, a peace-oriented policy, is to convince people that just because they are, have arms and have power, it does not give them legitimacy to kill other people. And on the other hand, of course, we have to, unfortunately, we have to deliver also arms to those mm. who want to defend themselves against the uh, aggressive invaders or occupiers, whoever it is. So peace policy has uh, the two sides of trying to create peaceful conditions, but also give uh, those who are in danger of being attacked weapons to defend themselves. Maybe the last question would be to touch a bit upon reconciliation, because the IAP covered much about reconciliation in the region and everything. How can this memorial center in Srebrenica, in your point of view, 
be used for reconciliation between the Bosniaks and the Serbs and also the Croats and all of the people here in, 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 in the Western Balkans and in ex-Yugoslavia. I was very impressed by uh, the uh, words of Hassan who showed us yesterday at the cemetery the, the many, many tombs, who said uh, people should go from here not with hate, but they should be better people afterwards. They should have these kind of sentiments of reconciliation. And it's not against the Serbs or against uh, the Christians or against the Muslims on the other side. It's about uh, to introduce into our minds humanity, the respect for everybody, uh, respect for all the people, even if they have different religious, political, whatever beliefs. And of course, it would need also people uh, to recognize the genocide, not to deny the genocide uh, as a precondition for a fruitful debate, discussion and for reconciliation. Dear Hannes, thank you very much for the interview.